One thing I really love about the Cornish coastline in the winter is that normally we have to wait until the summer before we get our spices to flavour our food. But in the winter, the rocks are covered in a native Cornish spice, and that's known as pepper dulse. And it's a really small, fine seaweed that clings to the side of the rocks. It's about mid shoreline, so you need to make sure you've got a re relatively low tide when you come down to find it. But right now it's perfect time for its growth. It's at the right length to cut. You have to sort of get down close to the rock and almost like you're giving a beard a trim. You come down and you just cut it away from the rock. And there you have an amazing pungent spice known as pepper dulse. And pepper dulse has loads of different flavours to different people depending on who's eating it. So common things that people taste are garlic bread or truffle or oyster. Um, some people taste lemon. It's just a really punchy, beautiful little flavouring that you can put in any dish. You know, we're going to be putting it with our vegan chicken pieces today and flavouring that in some pancakes. But you know, it wasn't long ago that I was in the community hall teaching people how to put this into a Czech style dumpling using stale bread. I love to put it into frittatas or if I'm cooking a fried egg, if I crack an egg in a pan, if I put a little bit of this pepper dolce just in the centre of the yolk as the egg is frying, it just makes this beautiful, umptuous taste go through the whole egg dish, which is really nice just on some toast, um, on your fried breakfast. It's a very versatile, very beautiful little thing and it's so abundant in the winter time in Cornwall. Something else I really love about coming down to the shoreline in winter is that we really get to up our vegetable intake with so many different species and varieties. And just by looking in this rock pool, we have about six different species of vegetable alone, which will just make your dishes so much more interesting, flavoursome and nutritious than things that you're used to cooking with. You know, as a culture, we tend to only have about three or four different vegetables in our veg rack, don't we? We go to the supermarket, we pick up the same things, potatoes, carrots, spinach, onions, you know, and we're doing the same thing every Every week. When you come to the rock pool it really makes you think about the colours, the flavours, textures and it just makes your, makes your dinner so much more interesting and you're putting all these different things into your body which is just so good for us at this time of year. So one thing I'm definitely going to be putting in the dish is some sea lettuce and I always say to people you know it's not really like lettuce it looks green and it's very thin and it's beautiful and at this time of year incredibly rich in vitamin C but it's not going to give you that crunchy succulent thing that you're expecting if you were going to put a lettuce leaf that we would buy from the shop in our mouth. So when we're mixing it into our, into our pan with our chicken to put into our pancakes it's going to give us more like a, a flavouring really. It's going to melt down and give us an umami flavouring, salty, sweet, delicious. It's one of my favourite seaweeds. So that's the beautiful green sea lettuce so that's definitely going in the basket. And then we've got a couple of non-native seaweeds in the rock pool as well. We've got this wireweed, Japanese wireweed, otherwise known as sargassum. And this one came over with the oyster trade, so it's not native here. And when you see it, sometimes it can smother the rock pools and take over our British native weeds. So it's one of these ones which is okay to actually hoik out and put into your stir fry without feeling guilty that you're doing any harm to the environment at all. It's called wireweed because it has that really wiry piece in the middle. So what we're doing really is we're stripping the outer flesh off the weed and we're just adding that into the dish. And because it's got these little bubbles that pop, you get this lovely little feeling in the mouth, which is just really, it's just a taste sensation really. And it's also tactile. So it's a bit like theater in the kitchen, you know, because why, why should we be putting just boring survival food on the plate? We shouldn't, we should be putting something exciting on the plate for our family and something to get the table talking because food is, a, is an experience. It shouldn't be something we do where we're sitting in front of the television. It's something that we do and celebrate and talk about together. And then we've got one of our staples, staples all year round, but in the winter time, it is so common and so abundant over all the rocks. And that is the rack. Now this is a channel rack Racks are a brown seaweed. And remember, all seaweeds are edible, so you can come down to the coastline. Anything that you cut from the rocks, you can eat. It's a really safe way to start foraging, especially to get children into foraging and eating wild food. So even if you get the wrong type of seaweed back in the kitchen, you know if it hits the pan, it's safe to eat. So rack is a really nice one that I use instead of a cabbage. It's really bulky, it goes from brown to bright emerald green when it hits the pan and it just gives us a lovely bulky fresh taste to the dish. That's going in the basket too. Finally in this rock pool we've got something called devil's tongue weed. 
And devil's tongueweed is also not native to the British shore. And it's a crazy one because when you touch it, it feels really slimy to the touch, but then when you take your hand away, there's no residue at all. But this one is such a delicate, fine seaweed that we add that last to the pan, and that's just gonna give us a rich, almost mushroomy, meaty-like flavor. It's gonna add that beautiful depth and texture. So devil's tongueweed. So one thing I've learned about doing this project, heating or eating, wildly surviving the winter, is that I'm having to rely on community food banks, food support schemes, and food that's just going out of date, the less than desirable, and all of these things pretty much are covered in plastic, they're processed, they're dense in ingredients that even I don't really understand what they are. And it's kind of sad, isn't it, that if you, you haven't got the affluent pocket, that we can't just go to the farmer's market or the organic food shop and pick whatever we want to create our meal. But the great thing is about utilising wild food in the edible seashore or the edible hedgerow is that you can be putting those organic, fresh, affluent produce into this nonsense that we're picking up. So what is this? This isn't chicken. It's a vegan chicken alternative, 100% plant-based, reduced to the price of 85 pence. Um, I got it for about 20p with my donation. And it is really just different types of proteins all mashed up together when really seaweed has got every single nutrient that you need to survive as a human being. And one of those nutrients is protein. They're heavily protein based. So we're gonna open up this packet and we're gonna put a little bit of oil in the pan. And where I'm going with this seaweed dish today is sort of China. So we're gonna be using Chinese five spice, which is a spice I already had in the cupboard. So utilize what you already have. Also on the food table were these Chinese style pancakes. Again, some packaged food, two types of plastic, and it's just, what is it? Wheat flour, all kinds of stuff in there. Not just wheat flour, lots of different additives and preservatives, but you know, they were free and we're gonna use them in our cooking today. And this is gonna be a nice family meal or a nice family lunch. So opening up the plastic and the plastic, and we see this weird looking plastic like fake meat inside. So a bit of oil goes in the pan. And this is just a rapeseed oil, a little bit I had left. Don't go rush out and buy special oils. See, we've got a little bit of a pop going on there. Right, this fake chicken is going in the pan. Now really, it's already pretty much cooked. It's processed, horrible looking things. And that is not something I would even wanna put in front of my children. They would look at that and they would think that the end of the world has come. So we're gonna make that something more attractive for them to eat. So we're gonna add, first of all, before we put our seaweeds in, we're just gonna add an onion. A cheapest chips onion. You know, and when you're shopping for things like this, just go and buy what you need. You need one onion for this dish. Go into your local independent shop and pick up an onion. The base of all dishes that I cook and create. And obviously we are in winter, so even if you haven't got the money for an onion, if you go back to episode one, you'll see us using wild onions from the hedgerow. And there are lots of wild onions and alliums around. So you could go out and pick those and use them instead of this. So rough chop, your white onion. Be careful of your fingers. Into the pan. And like I always say, if you're cooking up wild foods for friends and family, especially if you're using seaweeds, what you don't want to do is present them with a bowl of seaweeds that looks nothing like they've ever eaten before. They won't thank you for it. So you have to really, when you're starting off in this journey, add some ingredients that people know. And those would be some carrots. So I'm gonna put in a few, just two, two little carrots. This meal is gonna feed me and my children for a lunch or a dinner. So I just need two, I don't need to go overboard. Because you find if you buy big bags of things that most of the time, half of the packet goes off, goes slimy and ends up in your compost anyway. So just buy a little bit here and there for the meal that you need. And then it keeps it fresh, keeps your ingredients diverse, just like the diverse amount of seaweeds we're gonna use in the dish. And all these processed foods, you know, we are mammals. We are what we eat. So if you're eating a lot of junk food and processed food, you're gonna have a nasty jippy tummy. You're not gonna feel great about yourself. And when it's winter and it's dark, a lot of us suffer from things like seasonal affective disorder. So how can we make ourselves feel brighter and lighter and transform these processed foods? I'm gonna show you in a minute. But first of all, I like a bit of a kick when I'm doing a Chinese or an Asian dish. So a chili, one chili, nice red one, seeds and all, because I like it spicy, obviously optional. My chilli is going straight in the pan. 
And then everything that is wrong with the human race is right here. This is a pot of peeled garlic, peeled garlic in plastic. Not only that, but it was unused, reduced, and then it was about to go to landfill. That is everything wrong with the human race today. We've rescued it from landfill and I want a garlic clove, but please, please, please go and get a bulb of garlic from an independent grocer. Please don't buy garlic in plastic. It just feeds into everything about the culture of food that is alien and wrong in this day and age. Let's protect our planet and our children's planet. Right, garlic going in. Right, now what we want to do is start adding our seaweeds. The first one we're going to put in is the rack. That's the channel rack. Now, rack is a thick, dense seaweed. And I said it before, it's a bit like cabbage. So that's the first one you want to put in because it's going to take the longest to cook. And all brown seaweeds, when they hit heat, go from brown to emerald green. And I just like to use my scissors straight in, chop it in. So if you weren't using seaweeds, if you're not fortunate enough to live by the coast, you could use cabbage in place of this. You could use dock leaves. Dock leaves grow all over the country or mallow leaves. Um, you could use dandelion leaves, you know, think about the greens that you have outside. But if you live in Cornwall or you live in the Southwest or anywhere near the shoreline, do go and explore the seaweeds. They are so abundant, so good for you, not covered in plastic or chemicals and are free. Right, so a bit more of this rack needs to go in. I'm gonna pick through my basket here. Lovely, lovely. It's starting to go green in the pan, which also makes it look more pleasing to the eye, I think. So it's a, a nicer thing on the plates than a lot of brown squidgy things. Transforms the dish. Right, now what I want to do is put in my pepper dos. I want to spice this dish with like a lemon Sichuan pepper and luckily we found the spice we need growing right on the rocks. So that is just going to be snipped in and you don't need an awful lot of pepper dulce. It packs a punch. It's a really strong pungent flavour. Um, so a little bit really does go a long way and it's very easy to dry. You know, if you pick a load of it and you just leave it on your kitchen side on some on a tea towel or some kitchen roll, given a couple of days, providing you don't live in a really damp house, it will dry out naturally and then you can just grind it with your fingers and use it like you would a dry spice. It's a really versatile little ingredient. And when we were working with the community, cooking with seaweeds, like I said, we were putting it into dumplings, but we were also flavouring a broth. So we did a sort of Czech style broth soup and we were adding all these different seaweeds in as vegetables and this little spice to flavour the dish. So it lends itself well to all kinds of food, all kinds of cuisine. Asian especially, I suppose, because they're so, they're so used to cooking with it. It's a big part of their culture. So lots of recipes do come from that part of the world. Right, so now I've got my pepper dulce in there. Give it a bit of a stir because we don't want that weird chicken meat, non-chicken meat to stick to the pan. Oh, our devil's tongue weed. Devil's tongue weed and the Japanese wire weed are two seaweeds that really you're allowed to pull out from the holdfast. So when you're harvesting seaweeds responsibly, we always leave the holdfast on the rock, which is like the root, because if you pull the root off, you're killing the seaweed and that's the end of its life. But if you're just cutting through the fronds, then the seaweed has a chance to regrow. But when it comes to invasive species, it doesn't really matter if you're pulling them out by the holdfast, because then you're allowing the, the native British seaweeds a chance to thrive. So it's a good one, really. It might be a nasty in our waters, but it is a, a goodie in the pot or in the pan. So that's going to give us our bacony, smoky like flavour, much like dulse does. Not as much as dulse, but it does still give that really nice meaty flavour, I find, to, to dishes. And it's not slimy when you taste it. It might feel slimy in a tactile way in the hand, but in the mouth when it's cooked, it doesn't taste, feel or taste like that at all. Right, our Japanese wireweed. Remember I said, we're not gonna put the wiry pieces in, because that'd be a bit like having floss, dental floss going up your teeth. And that is a way to put anyone off seaweeds. We're just pulling off the outer parts of the frond, the little poppy, beautiful little, almost like when you've got popping candy in your mouth as a kid. You kind of get that feel. I guess it's like when you're frying up a cumin seed or something like that, and they slightly pop in the pan to release their flavor. I find that that happens with the Japanese wireweed. So we're just stripping the outer fronds off. 
And all of that can go in the compost. Seaweed is so good for compost, for the soil. Really good for your garden, if you're lucky enough to have a garden. Right, so that's been in. And now, last but not least, we're gonna put in our lovely sea lettuce. Our nice green vitamin C rich, so rich in vitamin C, so good for us, so beautiful sea lettuce. This is such a quick and easy dish. I absolutely love this. And I've been living on seaweeds pretty much for the past couple of weeks. It's been a big theme of the walks that I do. And if you're a low or no income family and you haven't got the money to come on a course, I offer them for free. So please get in touch, please come out. I'll show you where these weeds grow, where on the shoreline, how to pick them responsibly and how to make delicious dishes in your kitchen. Right, now we need to add some flavouring apart from the beautiful, delicate flavours of the seaweeds. And I bought with me some Chinese five spice, as I said, so I'm going to put in... Oh, the wind's going to blow it in for me. Chinese five spice is wonderful. When it hits heat, you just get this gorgeous smell, almost like you're walking into a takeaway, Chinese takeaway shop. And I'm just going to pop in a tiny bit more oil because that weird fake chicken meat has soaked up that oil. And I just want to brown those onions off a little bit more. Mix that through in the pan. Now all of these seaweeds can be eaten raw, but the thicker ones like the racks are much nicer cooked. So do make sure that you're giving things a little nibble and a taste as you're cooking it through. And some people like it more al dente and others like it softer. So I tend to just give it a little nibble in the pan as I'm going along. Now, oh, that's nice and spicy with that chilli. Whoa! Right, these pancakes, they do say to do these in the microwave. I don't have a microwave. I don't like them, as convenient as they are. I think they're going to be okay, just fried up on the pan. So I'm going to pull out now this lovely stir-fried mixture onto the plate. Whoa! Yeah, look at that. Delicious just with a little bit more oil. Okay. That one there. So I think we'll do three or four of these just to show you. I'm going to bring the plate up to my rock table and I'm just going to finish the dish with some beautiful fresh viola flowers. Now these sweet violets were growing outside of my caravan where I live and I could smell them this morning when I got up and went outside and I just thought again a lovely sign that winter will soon be coming to an end and everything will be in bloom and people will be much more hopeful but everything needs to look beautiful, everything needs to look like it comes from a a gourmet restaurant, even if it's from the rock pools for free on the Cornish coastline, using supermarket landfill waste food to feed our friends and family. So those beautiful sweet violets, just through the dish, giving us a diversity of colour. And now the fun part, get a bit messy, load up your little pancakes, all those lovely colours, and bon appétit. Mm.